we're just getting started on day three. We're all excited. Uh, machines are dirty as hell. A uh, few, few new battle scars, but they're all running great, no problems whatsoever. Getting ready to go on to Indian Ridge here. Our first time here, so we're uh, looking forward to it. And here we go. Part of the trail is uh, pretty fast moving it's fun uh, like a lot of the other you know trails out here they were in really good shape I, I was very very impressed I mean these there's so many trails out here and how they keep them this nice is beyond me Surprise, we're going up in elevation again. It looks pretty steep. If you look over to the left and right, the only way to really tell is look at the trees, but this is a pretty steep climb. Could you imagine just having a blast up here and just full send up these trails, knowing the edge is that steep and you come up against another group? Yeah, no thanks. to be really careful going around turns like this uh, just always trying to prepare for somebody coming the other way you just never know when it's gonna happen and uh, our machines pretty heavy uh, I know we're not moving so either somebody's gonna get hurt or get thrown off so just trying to drive as responsible as you can it just gets hard because you just want to go but got to do what's best for everybody and uh, you know, be it would be cool to use the radios to send a car like you know four or five miles ahead and just say all right just give her I mean that'd be fun um, we should try that sometime going at a 45 degree incline just climbing machines are just working their butts off but man was this fun look I'm as shocked as you 
you are that we made that left hand turn without turning it into a three point turn. Luma Life, it's awesome. So you see the top of the forest canopy here. We're pretty high up in elevation. Uh, definitely not running out of things to look at or see. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, the trails are great. They're groomed. They're in really good shape and everybody's having a really good time. That's my buddy telling me that he's noticing some drip marks on the pavement uh, and I should probably pull over and check out what that is. I can't remember what it was. I think we determined it wasn't coming from my machine because uh, we were good. But uh, it's still, you know, appreciated him telling me. I mean, the worst thing in the world he want to do is be dripping oil and not know it or something else, cooling, and have a problem with your machine that you could have avoided. Thanks for that fist, buddy. I appreciate it. Also, now I'm starting to see why this trail's so nice. Look at that. Nice. weather was just perfect today. I mean, blue skies, no clouds, warmed up a little bit. Absolutely just a wonderful ride. We definitely needed the break we just took there. I think everybody's bladders were full and a little tired. Uh, so it was good. Stretch the legs, ready to get back at it. I mean, you're just cruising along, thinking you're all great, and then BAM! Limo life. Can't make the turn. No long. I get it. I know what you're thinking. I mean, here's another one. But I don't even feel bad about the limo life here. I mean, this was a tight switch back. I did the best I could.
I know it's probably hard to tell when I speed up the video just how quick we're going, but the pace today was unreal. We were just clipping along and it was beautiful. We were all having fun and enjoying the ride. Yeah, foreshadowing till the end, uh, the pace came up to bite me in the ass later. Uh, you'll see it at the end of the video. In case anybody was wondering, hey, as we're watching these long clips faster uh, just here, check out the scenery. I mean, it was it's awesome to relive. I don't make the videos to like get, gain a bunch of subscribers or followers. I'm just some guy documenting this trip, uh, making memories for my buddies, and it was a great trip, great time. I uh, can't say that enough. And, and the just look at the number of miles we covered out in West Virginia. I mean, if you're stuck trail riding in the midwest and you don't come out here or you don't go to south dakota or moab or, or arizona and use your machine where it's really really shiny what it was designed to do you're cheating yourself i mean i'm not ripping on the trails in the midwest i mean there's some really nice ones in tennessee by the way we'll we'll be going there soon uh but where we are from Wisconsin and Florida, uh, Florida's got some really good mud holes and some really good trails. I'm not knocking them at all. And Wisconsin has some great trails too, but they're not technical at all. Uh, at least the ones in Wisconsin, they're they're pretty plain Jane. Uh, anybody in a glorified golf cart could, could go on them. Uh, we still have fun, we still enjoy them, but I'm telling you, you're cheating yourself if you don't take your machine to some other places and really see how uh, how the trails could be. They're a lot of fun. I better back out of here. I'm right on a hey, bottle. Hey, we're going up. Going that way. I'm gonna need to back out of here, Steve. I got I'm like right on a glass bottle. Well there's some foreshadowing for later. So this trip was taken in the end of April of 2023. Uh, it's chilly in the morning, uh, pretty nice during the day, and chilly in the evening. Uh, we're pushing it off till mid-May, hopefully get just a little bit warmer, not too much warmer, but uh, it'll be interesting to see the weather you know, change from uh, last year to this year. We had gone in 2022, and kind of the same deal you know it was kind of chilly in the morning chilling in the evening but nice during the day so we're hoping that two or three week lag will maybe warm it up just a touch in the morning for us
So we're getting into an area here that has extensive trail maintenance done on it that you can see on camera. Makes you feel good about the dollars you're spending on the trail pass. I absolutely have no problem, you know, paying for the trail pass. There's a lot of really good trails to ride. You definitely get your money's worth. Um, and they do it a little bit different. Uh, most areas that we've ridden in, the trail pass is per machine. They do it on a per person basis. They require helmets to be worn and the trail pass be affixed to the helmet. Therefore, everybody in the machine not only has to wear a helmet for safety, but has to pop for a trail pass. For me, it's not about the dollars. I don't like wearing a helmet side by side. It's just the way my personal choice is. Uh, but I get why they do it. They're trying to keep everybody safe and increase the revenue for the trails. So, you know, I, I again, no problem with increasing the revenue. Just don't tell me I gotta wear a helmet in my machine, but it's their trails, their rules. So we're having a great time and we're clipping along and I'm starting to get a little tired and I know I was starting to really appreciate getting direction from my wife, uh, left, right, which trail to take. You get tired, you're looking ahead, you're going fast, you're trying to make good decisions, keep the group together, look out for oncoming traffic. There's just a lot of things going through your mind. Um, and at the same time, you're, you're kind of throttling yourself back so that you're not going too fast for conditions. So you really appreciate someone telling you left, right, and you can count on them. Take this trail. Don't go there. It just takes a lot of pressure off, and you can relax in that regard a little bit. So she did a great job. She still does a great job navigating. It's just something that I want to make sure she knows I appreciate. So thanks, babe. Appreciate you. So when you got a group like this, the car behind the leader, and really all the cars behind the leader, they've got an important job too, and it, it's often overlooked. I mean, it, it's it's nice to just follow the person in front of you, and it's great. But when you're riding like this, I mean, you can't follow too close. You can't follow too far away, because uh, if you're too close, I mean, that you could hit the person. You could constantly be sucking in their dust and their exhaust. That's that's no fun. But on the flip side, if you hang back too far, then the leader thinks he's pulling away and they're going to be stopping all the time. I've run into that in past trips. We didn't have any of that. Mark and Cindy did great following uh, and Steve and Debbie behind them. We never just never really had an issue. So that was nice. I definitely appreciated that. Uh, being in the rear, uh, Steve and Debbie, that, that's a tough one too because the leader can never see that car. Uh, and they did... You know phenomenal they've been out here before so they know how it is it was just comforting knowing i had 
people who know what they were doing behind me and and everybody kind of knew what their job was and and we did it we had fun Nice group of wheelers there letting us go by and of course I can't make the turn. Little life, gotta love it. to the uh, suspension tuners out there. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're using sock springs on your machine. Uh, I ended up replacing my shocks and everything on this machine and I've never looked back, but even just replacing the springs with shock therapy springs on my Walker Evans, I mean, that made a big difference. My wife and I noticed right away, but uh, when we upgraded the shocks as well, that again made another huge difference. And your back will thank you. Uh, your machine will be able to go you know, smoother and quicker over these bumps and just it's just a more enjoyable ride. If you're like me, every minute of your time riding is cherished and you don't want to waste time uh, being uncomfortable. Yeah, we came across this group of uh, four-wheelers, uh, let them go. We weren't sure kind of what their plans were or whatnot. We certainly weren't trying to ride up on them, but they were they were super cool. They pulled over right away. They, they kind of knew, hey, uh, these guys are clipping along at a little quicker pace. So they just pulled over, made room for us, waved. Uh, they were okay, and, and we kept going. But uh, super nice of them to let us pass. That was cool.
So if you made it this long in the video, I mean, you're a diehard. Uh, it, it's it's a long one. There's there's a ton of forward footage. I'm, I still don't know what happened to my rear camera. Uh, it just corrupted all the footage from that that particular day. I believe I have footage of the next day, uh, which is pretty epic. But uh, I don't know. This was just a great day, and, and I mean, feel free to fast forward to till the end. There's some kind of cool pictures in there uh, of a trailside little snafu. But uh, I couldn't decide, you know, really what people wanted to see and what they didn't want to see. So I just kept it all going at two and a half uh, speed. But there's just, we covered a lot of miles that day. I think this was like a 150 or 170 mile day. So there's a lot of, a lot of ground covered. Hey, guess what? I couldn't make the turn again. Limo life. Man, right about now we're really looking at each other like we've got to get a two-seater machine. And uh, we talked about it. We, we thought for sure we were going to do it. But at the end, I just love my machine. There's no way I was going to get rid of it. If you like to hill climb, and I like to hill climb, West Virginia is the place for you. It's it's so much fun cruising up these hills and just giving her. Your machine gets pretty hot. Uh, you definitely want to make sure your cooling system is is up to snuff. Uh, foreshadowing for tomorrow, by the way. Uh, but it's it's so much fun. I love it. By the way, most of you have forgotten, probably because I didn't tell you, but uh, Steve and Debbie have a dog in their machine, and Annie's been everywhere with them riding, and she had no problem on these rides. She loves them. She gets out, does her business, ready to get back in. So think about all these miles we're doing, and there's the little dog in the back just having the time of her life. We ride with our dogs back in Wisconsin. We don't take them on big trips like this, but they would love it.
just absolutely making time, uh, just whipping along, burning up the miles, and enjoying every minute of it. just hauling the mail and come across an excavator guy doing some trail repairs and he was super cool he just kind of mosey on over moved over out of the way for us to get past and we thanked him and, and went on our way it was I was kind of wondering how I was gonna get by that big thing but he made it simple so thank you Ended up slicing the uh, driver's side rear tire uh, coming around a curve. This isn't the footage of it. I didn't get footage of it, so I'm not quite sure what happened. Uh, it's just kind of the end of our ride here, but uh, I did get some pictures of it, and it was just a case of, you know, pretty quick little stop. Uh, 
First picture is obviously the Carnage uh, sliced tire. Uh, we had to pull the Jack Daddy off the machine. My buddy Steve here is doing that. And we get the machine jacked up and uh, pull the, the flat tire off, put the spare on, and air it up. And we're on our way. I don't think we were stopped more than maybe 15 minutes here. I was back at camp. I forgot my high lift jack, so I had trouble breaking the bead on the uh, the tire because I had another tire back at camp that I was going to put on the wheel, uh, which was, you know, you should always do that. But I forgot my jack, so we couldn't break the bead. Ended up cutting it. It was a nightmare. I mean, we probably spent an hour on this. And uh, at the end, that was my victory beer, and it was well-deserved.